In Azure DevOps pipelines, if I want to access my Azure resources, I want to use a service principle. But we have also a second option, which is using the managed identity, which is valid if we have a private agent or private build agent deployed in a virtual machine into Azure. So into that virtual machine, we can attach to it a managed identity. And then we give that managed identity the right roles to access my Azure resources. And from within my Azure pipelines, I can use that managed identity to authenticate the pipeline to my Azure subscription. So I, I don't need to use the service principle with credentials stored inside Azure DevOps itself. So I would rely on that managed identity attached to the virtual machine. And from there, I can perform any operations for deploying my Terraform template, ARM templates, or deploy my web app, deploy my SQL deck back into my SQL databases, and so on. However, the downside of this approach is that anyone who have access to that virtual machine, whether that are your pipelines or any users, they would have access to that managed identity and they would have access to your Azure resources. So make sure to secure access to that virtual machine. Let's learn in this video how to create an Azure user assigned managed identity and attach it to an Azure virtual machine and use that identity in order to access other Azure resources. Here I have already created an Azure virtual machine and now I'll go to create, add another resource that is the user assigned managed identity and then I'll bind it to that virtual machine. So I search here managed identity, user assigned managed identity and then go to create, choose the resource group and choose the region and then choose the name and we go to review and create. I'll go to create and once the, resor the resource is created, I can navigate to the management page for that resource. And then from here, I have the menu for Azure role assignments where I can give that managed identity some roles. So let's go to give it some roles over my uh, one of my resource groups. So I'll choose the scope to be a resource group under this subscription and then I choose the resource group. So here first I'll, I'll choose the resource group that contains the resources for my virtual machine. So let's start with this one and we'll give it a role. Let's say here I want it to be just a reader and for that resource group. Let's click save. Now it tells me the role was added successfully but it will take actually a few seconds before that pops up into here and before that uh, uh, role assignment was assigned really into my into my identity. And once that uh, role was added from here, I'll go navigate to my virtual machine, which is an Azure virtual machine right here. Nothing is special about this VM. It's just an Azure VM. And from here, I'll go to identity under the virtual machine settings. So when here I have identity, I get actually the choice between using two types of identities, either to use the system assigned identity, and in this case, I just need to go to activate this feature right here, or I can use a user assigned identity to use the one that I have created previously here. And I want to add the one that I have created. So I'll use user assigned identity. And from here, I can see my VM managed identity. I'll select that one, and then I'll go to add it to bind it to this virtual machine. Once that's added successfully, from now I go to log into this virtual machine and try to use this managed identity to access my Azure resources. So I'll switch back here to my inside the, my virtual machine. And here I have opened a PowerShell uh, command line right here. And they have also installed the AZ uh, command line. So from here I can use AZ commands. And first thing I want to do here is that I want to take advantage of that attached managed identity to log in to my Azure subscription. So I can do that actually using AZ login. So for us, if we just type AZ login, Azure will log into our subscription using our own identity. It will use my own identity as Usam Delay in my Azure subscription. But here we want to use the identity that is the managed identity that is attached to this virtual machine. So in this case, I would add dash dash identity. And if I don't specify any identity here, typically it will go to check for uh, the only available identity in my case. But if I have multiple identities, then in that case, I would specify the ID of that identity. It means here I need to go to my to the identity and then go to properties. And then here select 
the resource ID for that identity. So in my case here, it will, both options will work either with or without the identity. So I'll add dash u just to show you that this works this way. And I put here the name of my identity and here it gives me access to my Azure subscription. It knows uh, the user that is connected right now is the assigned identity, is the Azure, uh, this, the user assigned identity, is not me as Osam Delay. So that means that from here I can do commands like az uh, group list dash o table, for example. And interestingly here I see my resource group that contains the virtual machine to which I gave access to my uh, identity. But I don't see the other resource groups. If you take a look at my Azure subscription from here for the resource groups, I have actually four resource groups. But because I've gave, I've gave access to only uh, one resource group for my identity, I would see only that one resource group. And the same here, if I try to list the resources inside this resource group using az resources list dash o table and then specify the name of the resource group. Let's run this. So here I can see the resources that are inside my, my, my uh, resource group name that I have access to where you can see my virtual machine and the network cards and so on. Great, let's try now to give our managed identity some more access to my Azure subscription. So I'll go back to the identity and I'll go to the role assignments and I'll go to add another role assignment. Let's say here I want to give it the role over the scope of my Azure subscription and then the role is gonna be the same reader, for example. So I select reader, save, it's now adding the role and let's wait for a few seconds before that role will be effective. And now we can see that role was added to my Azure subscription. I switch back to the virtual machine and from here I'll go to run again the command for listing the resource groups. So I'll go to say here az group list dash o table and now interestingly I can see all my resource groups and the Azure subscription. I don't see only one because I have access or I have the airbag defined at the scope of the subscription. So this was just a demo for listing resources in Azure, but you can imagine for other applications or for other, uh, for other use cases where you can go to access your key vault secrets or you can uh, use it to connect to a database, to a storage account. Uh, and so on. And another use case here for using this managed identity is from Azure DevOps itself. So from Azure DevOps, if you are using the host or the private build agent, then from there you can go to use this attached managed identity to your virtual machine. Of course, again, remember that virtual machine should be an Azure virtual machine, not uh, in your, uh, not uh, uh, your premise virtual machine. So if I switch to Azure DevOps right here, where you go to service connection, you can go to create a service connection and select Azure Resource Manager. And from here, you can find multiple options. Either you let Azure DevOps create service principle for you, or you create one automatically using the command line, az id sp create for airbag, or you use the managed identity that is attached to the private build agent. And if I choose that option, managed identity, here it will ask me for my subscription ID, name, tenant ID, and the service connection name. And note here, it's not asking me for the ID of the managed identity. Actually, here it will, this is still a, limit, a limitation today in Azure DevOps built agents, is that it will accept only one uh, so one managed identity that should be the one referenced by default and that is better actually that you use here the system assigned managed identity instead of the user assigned managed identity so that it can find it uh, easier right here. So from uh, then later from within your YAML pipelines or your classical pipelines you can use the uh, managed identity in order to connect and to deploy your applications into Azure subscription instead of using a service principle. I hope this demo was helpful. Uh, you can find the commands that I have used in these demos into this GitHub repository with all the commands for PowerShell for the web app and also for the virtual machine. Thank you.